Later, you know what you have that kind of serious injury right. that you know you know that that can be that, that can you know affect the family in every kind of way financially emotionally yeah. every way possible there are a lot of issues kind of to discuss you know what the future prognosis is medicare workers comp clearly it's a workers comp safe hopefully they have workers comp coverage that's the first issue but it's just not that simple kenny for example when there's a workers comp case sometimes the employer likes to send what's called a nurse case manager okay. you know to the doctor's appointments should you allow those things? Okay. What kind of, you know, the worker has a choice of physician. What choice, have they made that choice? Have they made the right choice? Right. So there's a lot to cover. And the more serious, obviously, the more serious the injury, the more serious the consequences. Quite frankly, you definitely need a lawyer for sure. You go ahead and start, start the process. Absolutely. And this is a classic time, you know, okay. interview your lawyer, right? Because okay. we talk about it every week and I will talk about it, I'm sure, until we <laughs> stop doing the show. And that is, it is perfectly acceptable. It is not encouraged to ask your lawyer, is this the kind of work you do? Do you how many of these cases do you handle? Do you handle it regularly? Because you want to make sure you're with the right person, and, and it's just critical. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. And then, Matt, I, I was listening. The question, and, he, and this is Tony asking for a friend of the family. Yep. If they do need to make that first phone call to you, yep. does it have to be a direct family member, or does it, or does, can it be a friend of the family calling on behalf uh, of a friend, or does it need to be an actual legal connection? Well, you know, you know, I would ideally. prefer, ideally, you'd want a family member, right? Okay. You know, the wife, uh, you know, a brother, sister, mother, father, you know, because you've got to get into, you know, important, critical, confidential facts, Kenny, right away. And so, you know, when you go through an intermediary, when you go through a third party, you know, usually some things get lost in translation. I'm sure the lawyer's going to have follow-up questions and want specifics, and the friend may not know, right? And so you want to get the best information you can as soon as you can. So always best with a family member if the, you know, if the person injured is not available to do it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Matt, the phone lines are hopping right now. I'm going to do a little on-air programming. Skylar, if you can hear me, uh, what line do I need to go to first? He'll let you know. Uh, uh, we're going to line two, Matt. All right, go Kenny, I'm ready. It. Yeah, throw it on me, Kenny. <laughs> now look, this is the new Star Trek system. We here. love it. Yeah, I know. Right there's it two. All blinking to so me. Right there. Yep. Good evening. Welcome to Law Call. What can we help you with tonight? We had her and we lost her. We I did. Know it. Maybe she it, wasn't lying too. No, she wasn't. No, Skylar, it's not she, your fault. I'm blaming Kenny, I, first of all. It probably is. Right. Skylar, is she there with us? Okay. She was not exactly there. Okay. Matt, but we did it's get okay. her notes on this one. Right. Uh, she was trying to buy a home uh, during the home process. Paperwork got messed up between her and attorney and the people she's buying the home from. So it turns out the documents some do 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 got kind of switched up and looks like she brought the wrong piece of property. Uh, yes, so uh, a little tricky wicket on that one. What would you uh, get a new attorney? Start over? Who do you? Where do you start on this one? Well, yeah, my hope is that everyone is reasonable, and my hope is yes. that everyone recognizes this was some type of mistake, and it's those things can be fixable. The question is how easy is it fixable? Okay. Right. <laughs> so uh, right. you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I would like to know more details yeah, and this hear one's... about that. But you know. Yeah, these things happen. Not every day, obviously. And um, the good news is she caught it now, hopefully early on in the process. That's so, true. you know, immediately call the lawyer. Uh, it kind of, that's where I would start. Okay. Uh, and her I lawyer. Her lawyer, right. And I wouldn't kind of come in, you know, throwing haymakers. I would just say, hey, what happened, what happened here? here? You right. know, how do we fix it? Uh, what happened and how do we fix it? And please fix it right now. Yeah. And that's what I would, that's what I would start with. Kind and let the lawyer do their work. And uh, I fully anticipate that that could be turned around rather quickly. We had, and I, this is not maybe apples to apples, we had a piece of property that we were buying from the county. This was a couple of years ago. And when we had it surveyed out, there was three original pieces of property. When we came together for the get them all to one piece yeah. of property for the final sell on it, right. we realized there was a survey mistake and not all the lines lined yeah. up. And you got to have them lined up. It was, it was a little bit you know, troubling at first, but once, like you were saying, once reasonable people started talking about it and everybody was dealing, everything was above the table, it all worked out just fine. Absolutely, and let me just say, you know, it, it, it happens, okay? Let me right. just say, especially when you are, when you are, you know, taking land and you are perhaps subdividing it, you know, pulling into smaller pieces or larger pieces, combining pieces, Absolutely. taking things away because you have to survey, there has to be meat and bounds, you've got to re-describe it. That's so right. in those circumstances, you know, it, it happens, you know, I wouldn't say frequently, but it's not uncommon at all. But once again, very fixable, handleable, glad she caught it early. Start with your lawyer, you know, that she started with. They should be able to get turned around pretty quick. Okay. And if you can call us back, we'd love to talk to you still. All right. That takes yeah. us to our first break of the evening. When we call, come back, we've got Jim Reeves with tonight's legal brief, plus tons of phone calls lining up here on the phone calls. <laughs> we come back on Law Call for Ask Us Anything.
Welcome back to WLOX Law Call, broadcasting from the Gulf Coast to the Pine Belt with lawyers from the Biloxi personal injury law firm of Reeves and Medier, the attorneys for South Mississippi, including Jim Reeves, known as a tough fighter. Jim has more than 100 cases with a recovery of $1 million or more and is recognized as a top 100 trial lawyer by the National Trial Lawyers Association, plus Matthew Medier. Matthew served as an award-winning judge for nearly 20 years has recovered millions for his clients, and is deeply involved in community issues on the entire coast, and hosted by broadcaster Ken Flanagan. The show has included over 200 guest attorneys from across Mississippi. This is WLOX Law Call. And welcome back to Law Call on this Saturday evening. Strawberry moon out there tonight, Matthew. Full moon. I, I bought some strawberries at the is farmer's that reason, market is, today. Is that the reason they call and it blueberries. the strawberry moon? It is, yes. I know. Okay, good to yeah. know. So yeah, You're uh, welcome. All right, tonight's topic is Ask Us Anything. But now it's time for our legal brief. Now, proving that a dangerous product can be very tough and uh, liability can be very tough to come by as well. Personal injury attorney Jim Reeves explains that in tonight's legal brief. If you use any product like an ordinary consumer would and are injured, then you may have a case. Generally, you don't have to prove any wrongdoing by the manufacturer. You just have to prove that the product is unsafe. But these cases can be complex. Specifically, you must prove that the product was dangerous or defective and would be perceived so by a reasonable person. This can come from the design, the manufacturing, or even the marketing of the product. Secondly, you must show that the product injured you and most importantly, that your injury was caused by the defect. The product may be unsafe and you may be injured, but proving that that product caused that injury is the tricky part. An experienced attorney can advise you about the strength of your case and how the manufacturer and other defendants are likely to try to say they are not at fault. That's your legal brief for tonight. I'm personal injury attorney Jim Reeves. Back to you. All right, Jim, thank you. Good information, as always, okay. in our legal brief. You can catch that on the website a little bit later in the week. And all of the legal briefs that we do, they're, they're mm -hmm. there waiting to be Even consumed. the one about the wedding ring? Uh, I think that, we finally got rid we? of the wedding ring have one. We? Yeah, it looks like Kate and <laughs> William are going to make it out. Yeah, I think That's, they're going yeah, to make it, yeah. so there's the wedding ring. That's when that, that was a hot topic. Yeah, but Harry and Megan. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 I don't Hard know. chase. I don't, I don't know. know. Hard call on that one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so sure. tonight's topic is Ask Us Anything, obviously, and we are going to go to line one and talk to Emmy yeah. tonight. Emmy, yeah. uh, what can we help you with? Hey, Emmy. I know I hit the right button this time. Ah, you did. I, I really no, did. did. It was one, and I hit it. No, I'm, you I'm, didn't, gonna do, sir. I'm just going to do it again. No, go ahead. I'm Emmy, just going to do it again. Stay with us, Emmy. Stay with us, Emmy. It's only Kenny's tenth year doing this, <laughs> so he's going to get this any minute. I uh, I feel like all right. I'm going to hit this button. Go I don't ahead. know. This it doesn't. There seem are a like, lot of buttons here. Emmy, are you there? I'm going to say that's what not going to work. Question? Out. I'm afraid I. I'm not really positive what Emmy's was, but it involved a car accident, and there was a police report. I didn't get all the details, but there was right, a police I'm report taking. that she disagreed with and involved a family member. I'm going to take it. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Listen, listen, it does happen. All I you mean, need is a nugget. I just, oh, just, just, just a little whisper of a question. A whisper. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, listen, it does happen. People, you know, we, we see a lot of car wrecks, obviously, come through our office. And, and it's, not, it doesn't, it's not unusual for someone to come in and say, well, listen, I've got the description here of the accident by the officer, uh, and I don't agree. I don't think that's right. And understand, too, the officer wasn't an eyewitness, right? And they're coming in after the scene. They're trying to kind of piece together what happened. And sometimes people, you know, are, are you know, it's in their interest to maybe describe things a little differently than what yeah, actually happened. Right, right, Perhaps right. the at-fault person wants to kind of change the oh, facts Oh, you know bit. that happened. So anyway, so listen, give the officers a little break on that. But sometimes folks do come and say, listen, I really do disagree with this. What do I do? What you can do is you can actually go down to the police department and you could ask them to do an addendum to the report. And you okay. can actually, they should give you a form. You should kind of write it out. And then what it should be, it'll be, it'll give you an opportunity to say, listen, here's the police report. And I disagree or I think, you know, this is right or this is wrong. And you can kind of write out a little paragraph and that's supposed to be an addendum. Now, they don't per se change the report once it's issued. Okay. okay? okay. Because it has to be done by the officer and then it gets reviewed. Okay. But once it's out, they don't go back and say, oh, we're too, but you can do an addendum. Do an addendum. Kind of a correction. Okay. Emmy, so I hope that happen. helps. Yeah, that, that's, I felt like that in the was, spirit of the question she was going for. So we'll, Something. But there. Hey, look, third time's the charm here. Yeah. Are you ready to go? We're right. going to go to line two. We're going to go to Kathy and Perkinson, one of my favorite places. What's going on in Perk tonight? Yeah. Kathy, are you there? Hey, Kathy. 
I'm going to say we have an issue. No, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's my years of broadcasting experience. <laughs> All right, Kathy, are you there? I feel like she's. I am. I'm here. Oh, oh, thank goodness, Kathy. We're not blaming oh, you. We're blaming okay. Kenny. I, it's no. probably my fault. Yeah, it is. Hey, <laughs> Kathy, thanks for hanging with it's us. It's the phone call. <laughs> it is. <laughs> or Kenny. There it is. Kathy, thank you so much for uh, your patience. What can we help you with tonight? Okay, what I was wondering is, um, we moved to Perkinston, Mississippi, from Wisconsin in January. Okay. Uh, and soda. anyway, there was parts of our furniture. A lot of it got wrecked, broken and other things were missing a couple items we don't know what to do because we've been trying to get a hold of them since january and they just won't return our calls or anything kathy so you use like one of the big national you don't have to say their names but you use like one of the big national companies and they moved your furniture y'all open the big door and half of it's broken yeah wow because we use a big furniture you know a company and they they farm it out you know what i mean to another you know, saying they're supposed to be white glove, you know, gotcha. whatever service. <laughs> yeah. And wow. then we, we oh. sent them the pictures and everything oh, done what we were supposed to. And we just never hear anything. So we were like wondering, where do we start or what Kathy, do we sure. do? Kathy, got a question for you. Um, what's your estimation of the damage as far as a dollar amount? Great question. So he, if, if you had to put a dollar amount, you know, on your on what would you've been damaged as a result of your furniture, what would you say? I'd say around 2000 okay. okay. Got your, I got your answer, right, Kathy. Yep. All right, listen, this is a classic, perfect case for justice court. Absolutely. Okay, so listen, justice court, I know you're saying, hey, what, what's that? Well, it is a court. It is, it's created, it's another way to create a small claims court, okay? But doesn't, don't be intimidated by that. Right. It's really set up for non-lawyers to go in to redress legal matters because, you know, you know, honestly, where the money involved is, you know, is at a certain level because, you know, if you go see a lawyer and, you know, you'll be, you'll be underwater, meaning you'll be paying more for your lawyer than the recovery of your damage. So it is, you show up to justice court, the staff is very friendly. Uh, there's one in your area, bring the pictures, they will help you kind of write out you know your issue and then they do a lot of the legal heavy lifting they will right. serve the company uh which is means they will let them know that you are filing a claim they'll give you a court date and then you show up there and you present your case you're not a lawyer the judge the judge is usually not a lawyer quite frankly a judge right. you have to be 18 and a high school graduate so they're not going to hold you necessarily to a lawyer standard it's really set up for folks to come in and you know have a redress and a judge will issue a you know an opinion so if you have photographs and proof i think you're going to come out great and the nice thing is at that kind of level, if you think it's about 2,000 damage, that's within the jurisdictional limits of that court. That court has the authority to issue an award for you for that amount of money. And, and, I, and it's, it's a very effective way, really, it it to really get is. companies to kind of pay attention when sometimes they wouldn't. Because, that, that, you know, no company, I don't care how big, they don't like getting paid for from justice court. I mean, they're going to show up because, you know, that they, they're going to they're going to send someone. They're going to show up. They're going to call you. So it's a great way to really redress your problem. Justice court all the way. We have talked about justice court. It's just it is a great court. It's oh, the it people's is. court. And uh, really? and Kathy, let me tell you, it's going to be a downtown Wiggins. You're going to go to the Stone County Courthouse. You're going to go up the hill. It's either it's either going to be in the courthouse itself or it's going to be that uh, admin right. building that's right behind the courthouse where I think the sheriff's department is. They'll take great care of you there over there, too. Now, Matt, if she comes back, she, I can I can feel her on the phone right now. Well, maybe I shorted myself there. It goes up to quite a bit more than two thousand dollars. It certainly it? does. Yeah, you've got more than more than enough room. Even if you doubled those numbers, Kathy, you'd be OK. So as I say, and they help with collections. There, there's a little bit of a filing free, so bring your checkbook with you, but bring all your paperwork, bring the contract that you signed with the moving company, That's right. bring your pictures, and I'm telling you, I, I think you're going to be, it's a great service, it's very helpful, I think you're going to be happy with the result. Okay, very good. Downtown Wiggins, the That's big right. wig is all you need, they'll get you taken care That's of. It's a long way there. from Wisconsin to Perkins. It is a quite a bit. You. And Kathy, we're happy I, I to have I want to know you. more about that move, but I know. Well, we don't have time for that. Kathy, we could talk yeah. to you about where to go eat in Stone County, there's a lot of great places <laughs> over there. Come to George County too, we'd love to have you. All right, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for the call tonight. That takes us into our our final break of the evening. When we come back, we try to get one more email question in and definitely more of your calls maybe and questions. Call. And maybe a phone call <laughs> Who knows? here on Law Call.
song. Who remembers that? I do. And the microphones are uh, on. Yeah, they there are. we are. That's We're right. back. It's live on the air. Remember the little Pong video game? Yeah, oh, the yeah, little thing good back fun. and forth. Good fun. Yeah. Nor doesn't remember it. No. Jim Reeves, Matthew so. Medier, Reeves and Medier, 228. 374-5151. We just leave the mics going, folks. When y'all yeah, when y'all dip out the yeah, commercial, we're still, we're, we're still rolling. Still happening. That's uh, their toll-free number is right there as well. Uh, 855-558-2977. RMLawCall.com, which I was referring to earlier. You can hear this music. You can hear the legal briefs, and a lot of this uh, week's show will be on there Monday or Tuesday this upcoming week for sure. Matt got a great email question for you. We're a little right. tight on time, but this yep. one came through and we both okay. liked it. Came in for Cassandra. Cassandra says, my mother was served legal papers related to my uncle's will. All right, sounds pretty easy. Why were the papers served by the sheriff's deputy? Was there wasn't anything illegal about it with an explanation point? Boom. Oh. Cassandra yep. upset. I get it. What's okay. going on, Matt? Well, all right, one of the things you have to do, whether you, whatever you go to court on a probate issue with, with or will or without, you've got to establish the heirs, okay? And to do that, you have to, you have to serve them with paper and say, we're having a hearing to determine who the heirs are of a various person. So okay. to do that, every heir has to get served with the paperwork to give you, to give that person the chance to come to court if they need to. What typically your mother needs to do, there should be paper, in that paperwork, there should be the name of a lawyer. She just she needs to call that lawyer, make okay. sure what that hearing is. If it's just a determined heirship, there's a form that she can sign that she doesn't have to come to court. I want to, another thing you have to do, can you have to publish in the newspaper. Yeah. The all unknown heirs of so-and-so, Cassandra's mother has to come to court on that day. And what they will do, the courthouse that day at, at the hearing, a bailiff will stand up and say, are there any unknown heirs of, you know, ex so-and-so, sure. please come forward. They call it three times and they report to the judge saying, no judge, nobody's answered. And that's how you determine who the heirs are of a particular person. So more than likely, it's just that could be something else, but that start with that. There's a lawyer phone number on that paperwork. Call them, see what they say. If you're not comfortable with it, call me on Monday and I'll kind of walk you through. Go ahead from that side. Yeah. You know what it also could could be too, right. and, and and it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell their difference in their their uniforms. That could have been a constable. Uh, a lot of times in smaller counties, you'll have the constables go out right. and serve papers and stuff like that. And maybe it's, it looked like a sheriff deputy, but it was a constable. And let me tell you this: having gone through you know this several times in my own family, you know, you just you you do your family such a service if you have your affairs in order That's true. with your will. Because I, I tell you, there are some hurt feelings that can happen <laughs> if your will is not in order. And so folks, please, you know, every couple of years, pull out the will, take a look at mm -hmm. it, review it, make sure it's up to date. Because right. I promise you, if a will is more than 10 years old, you probably need to change it. You need gotcha. to update it. So absolutely, it's really, you know, it's really a gift that you can do your family, I promise you, because there'll be a lot of hurt feelings if you don't. Cassandra, thank you for the email question. Yeah. Matt, I'm going to rush and try to get Kelly on line three here. Hey. Kelly, what can we help you with? we got to go quick, though. Hey, Kelly. Hi. I have a uh, DUI in a city that I was not alcohol or illegal drug. Okay. Um, Kelly, was it medication? It was medication. Okay. They said they wouldn't suspend my driver's license, but they did, and I've got it in writing. Okay. I don't know how to get my driver's license back. Yeah, Kelly, all right, I can kind of pick that up. Kelly, what you've got is that's called a DUI other, all right? A, a DUI is called driving while really impaired, okay? Right. So I know typically that means alcohol, right? Or uh, people sometimes think of illegal substance, but the truth is you can be impaired by a legally prescribed medication. I got you. And if you are impaired, you still can get a DUI even though you have a prescription, even though you are taking it, uh, you think the right way. As you know, a lot of medications say, you know, don't drive heavy machinery, That's don't true. drive with this kind of stuff. So. It's, it's, it's whether you were impaired, whether it be alcohol, whether it be illegal drugs or legally prescribed drugs. So that's one issue. Second thing is about your suspended license. I'm suspecting, my suspicion is that they offered you the intoxilizer and you refused. In Mississippi, it is by, because you have a driver's license, you've given the, the police officer the consent to take the intoxilizer. If you refuse automatically, your license is gonna be suspended. Whether you're guilty, not guilty, it doesn't matter. 
that you're going to get your license suspended. Does she need a lawyer on this one? She does. Okay. <laughs> she, <laughs> yes, she does. Kelly, you need a lawyer on uh, this one. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's one of those things that sounds probably a little too complicated to handle on your own, yep. uh, especially with the medical right. Uh, prescription medication. Right. Listen, you can medication. get a waiver for your suspended license. There's things you can do with DUIs you couldn't do five years ago, but absolutely talk to a lawyer. Plenty of them around. Happy to talk to you. Okay. Very good. Kelly, yep. thank you so much for thank the call you. tonight. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for hanging in for the show. All right. That takes care of all of our time for tonight's show. It went by yeah. once once this thing started working, we were, we were rolling on that one. We'll be yeah. back next Saturday night with Jim Reeves talking about personal injury. But until then, my friends, good, good night. night.